Hey guys, it's me, and today, <laughs> that still sounds weird. Why can't I make that sound right in my mouth? I'm so used to saying, hey guys, it's Jessica. Stop thinking about it. Anyway, so today we're gonna try a brand that I've, I don't think ever tried, and that's the brand Clarins. And I, I, I feel like you don't hear a lot about it on YouTube either. You know, it's one of those brands that it's a nicer brand, it's expensive, um, which is probably why I haven't tried it. And I don't know, I was on Ulta's website and I saw they sold some Clarins products and I was like, hmm. I was kind of surprised to see it on Ulta's website, but then again, Ulta does have high-end brands on there. But I don't know, it was one of those brands that I didn't think they sold, so I guess that's why I felt surprised. Anyway, so I bought a primer, a concealer, a foundation, a lip product, and I also have a, like a small sample size that came with my order just to give a try, so I figure we'll try that as well. So if you like this kind of video, give it a thumbs up. I hope you subscribe, let's get into it. So, so before we dive into the products, I figured I pulled up the Wikipedia article about Clarins because I was on the Clarins website and I couldn't really f find anything about the brand. So basically it's kind of, it. the brand was started in the 50s and and it's a French brand, started in France, and it says that they developed a new approach to face and body treatments and created some products based exclusively on plants. So that was kind of their big thing when they first started. Um, and then in the 70s, it kind of spread internationally. It hit the US in 1981, um, but it says in 1987 was the Clarence sunscreen that was like established, and it said which really was the beginning of the company which I'm assuming means that was like the start of a lot of success because it was 30 years after, anyway. This isn't worded well, so I'm like, who wrote this? <laughs> so just kind of interesting things to know, but I wanted to look these products up as well to see what the claims are. Since they are expensive, we're gonna find out if they actually live up to these claims. We are gonna start with this extra firming, wrinkle control firming day cream. It's got an SPF of 15. I've actually already put SPF on because 15 is not even close to what you'd need. Um, and it's actually pretty bright in my office, so I actually do get a decent amount of sunlight, so I'm trying to be really good about wearing sunscreen every day. So it typically, if you buy the full size, it comes like in a pot, um, and it's a day cream, so it's their extra firming jour. And it says it, it provides a complete firming action thanks to kangaroo flower extract, a new plant discovery known for its regenerating power to visibly lift and minimize wrinkles. The full size is $87. Oh man, so we're just gonna get a little bit to start. Maybe that's too much, I don't know. Um, and we'll just, oh, I need to pull my hair back. I'll do that in a second. Kind of focus it in those upper areas of the face and then just kind of, it definitely smells plant-based. <laughs> like it smells, not floral, but there's definitely a scent there, but it doesn't smell like it's it's fragranced like that. It smells like it might just be a more natural smell. It's it's not bad. It's pleasant. Digging the way, I feel like it looks nice on the skin. Like it like instantly kind of brightened it up a little bit. I got these little like claws or clips, whatever you call them, from the brand Kitsch, which I discovered because I have a hair like a Turby Twist kind of a product. Um, I use those all the time, so I like to have multiple and. Um, Anyway, it's a brand that makes one that I was sent from some company, it doesn't matter. It's a really cute, like they have a few cute things on Ulta and I bought these when I bought this Clarence stuff as well. And it comes in a pack of three, I can link it below. But they like actually hold your hair in place. So if you do this or like when I'm heat styling my hair, I'll use these to hold up sections of my hair, they are superb. So like I said, the smell was kind of pleasant, not overpowering. Um, it feels nice, it feels very, very moisturized. You definitely need your own sunscreen. It's not going to be enough sun protection, but I like the way that feels. Now, does it feel like it's worth $87? That's just so much money, right? But again, I always say with skincare, if it's a really great product and you actually notice a difference in your skin, then sure it might be, but I'll need to try this some more before I could certainly tell you, but I do like the way it feels. It's very, very pleasant. So the next product, this is, I was excited actually about all of these and that's what's, you know, we get a lot of PR and I know you guys have probably heard a lot of YouTubers talk about this, but I feel like it's exciting when you're making purchases of makeup yourself because you're picking out things that you yourself are excited to try. And like all of these, again, it's just a fresh brand for me, trying fresh things that I've not heard anyone else's reviews on. It's just kind of, it's exciting, you know? There are gems out there that we haven't discovered yet. And anyway, this is one of their SOS primers. They have maybe five or six different colors. Now on Ulta's website, they have four of them, but I think on the Clarence website, they were like five or six total. 
Um, and they're all just four different things. So this is the lavender one and it said it visibly brightens sallow skin. Now I have already used all of the rest of these at least once, so this is kind of my second impression, um, so I'll have to update you, but these retail for $39, and it says, Prime Time, discover solutions for any beauty concern. Um, it says it's got organic sea lily extract. It hydrates the skin for 24 hours. It's lightweight, oil-free formula, let skin breathe, but also protects it against environmental pollution, which is huge. There are so many brands coming out with products named, basically, based on the idea that it's a kind of pollution protector because there is so much crap in the air. So like I said, I got number five lavender because I thought, you know, I do feel like my skin can kind of look sallow at times, kind of gray and dull and just like, so I figured this would be nice and I don't have a primer like this other than the Becca, LOL, I guess I do. Um, the Becca, what do they actually call it? First light priming filter. Let's compare these. So the Becca one's around the same price and it has a pump, which I like this SOS pump. The SOS one also has a pump, but it's like a squishy tube. It's a totally different color, so there we go. The Clarins one is more of like a pinkish lavender, and this Becca one is like a bluish purple, you know? And also, the SOS one, you can see, obviously it's gonna blend in, but it has a little bit more pigment to it than the Becca. The Becca one's a little bit more sheer, so it's something, they're actually quite different, so there we go. I'm glad I compared those. Um, and I do like the Becca one. Like I said, it is more sheer, but I feel like it does kind of brighten the skin a little bit before you put foundation on top. I like it. Is it one that I'm gonna use for the rest of my life? No, but I do like it. I'll probably use it up. But this SOS one kind of surprised me. I want you to look, I'm gonna maybe do half my face so you can kind of decide for yourself if you think it's doing anything. Um, $39 is not a crazy price for a primer, considering a lot of high-end primers cost that amount, you know? But I felt like this actually, I felt like it really does brighten the skin. Um, I'm trying to just do it on the half. I'll just avoid the nose for now, but I will put it on there here in a second. Now, obviously you can see kind of that rosy tone for a bit as it sinks into your skin. But as far as I know, these are supposed to be universal used on any skin tone. It doesn't matter how dark, light, medium, whatever you are. Um, it should work. I'm gonna go ahead and do half on my nose as well because I feel like that's an area where you might be able to notice it as well. So kind of showing you up close, I just feel like on the non-primed side you can still see imperfections and stuff like that, but I kind of feel like it's more evened out on this side, right? I'm not crazy, am I? I'm looking at it in my mirror. It definitely evens out the like kind of pigmentation I have, which most primers don't do for me. So I was really taken aback considering it's not a super glowy primer, it's not a, you know, pore filling, it's just kind of a moisturizing one that just helps with your tone. And I was so surprised by how much it did help with my tone. I've not really found a primer that does that. So now that I've kind of shown you the difference, can you guys see that? Um, I'll go ahead and finish my face really quickly. And feel-wise, I do feel like it feels very slightly moisturizing. Um, it doesn't feel sticky but it also is not you know, necessarily pore filling or smoothing. I just think it's adding that little bit of hydration and kind of balancing your tone. Now, the other ones they offer are, um, they have Universal Light number 00, which is, is radiant. I think, I'm assuming it's kind of more pearly, um, more of a radiant kind of a primer. There's Rose 01, which minimizes signs of fatigue, which I'm curious, considering the shade of this, how much more rosy, I mean, this is obviously purple tinted, but it's definitely close to pink. So curious how different the rose one would really be from this one. Peach 02 blurs imperfection, coral 03 visibly reduces dark spots. That's more of like an actual coral color. And then they have green 04, which visibly reduces redness. So that's six of them total, but on the website here, I only see four of them, the rose, the universal light, the green and then the purple one, unless they have it elsewhere. So I'll see what I can find down below for all of those because obviously you might not have the same needs as me, but you might still be interested in trying it because I liked it and you'll see the foundation I put on top of it. I think it sat really nicely on top. So, so this next foundation, I was really excited to try despite the fact that I figured it was kind of a liquidy foundation and I'm not usually a fan of that, but as my skin has kind of changed and I'm getting more into those lower coverage kind of chill foundations. I feel like this is something that now I might like, whereas a couple of years ago when I wanted more full coverage, I just really didn't. I felt like I couldn't get the coverage I wanted. So 
This caught my eye because it's called their Skin Illusion Natural Hydrating Foundation. I thought, natural? Hydrating? Skin? <laughs> that sounds awesome. So I also loved the bottle packaging. I thought it was so pretty. It's a little dropper, which really for something like this, it's so liquidy, it works pretty well. You know, you can apply it right onto your face. You can put it on your hand and then apply it. You can do it on a brush, you know, however you want, like anything. You can apply it how you want. It only has 22 shades, so I think they've got some room to improve with their uh, range. But here is what I have gleaned about this. And you guys can correct me below if I'm wrong, but I was kind of looking some stuff up about it. And it sounds like they used to have this and that perhaps they reformulated it and kind of re-released it, re-promoted it. Um, and a lot of people were saying, oh, I love, like it was such a holy grail kind of a product. And now they're like, oh, it's different now. But it was kind of hit or miss, like in the blogs I was reading, half the people were like, I really, I still love the new formulation. Other people were like, it's okay, it's just not the same. So I don't know, but I've tried this once. I'll show you me applying it and I'll, I'll kind of share my thoughts on it. But like I said, it's 44 bucks. So it better be pretty nice because that's, you know, those kinds of expensive foundations, they're just expensive. But it says it's Clarins' first serum foundation. It combines the fluidity of pure plant oils with the perfect amount of pigments that lets skin breathe, delivers a smooth, flawless, bare skin feel with buildable coverage and 12 hours of impeccable wear. Um, Clarins HD Light Optimizing, Optimizing Complex with pink pearls and soft focus powders provides immediate radiance. Red Genia? I've never even heard of that. Reveals a luminous complexion. Mary's Thistle Oil softens the skin. Organic Leaf of Life extract hydrates for 24 hours. Wow. So... And then they give like, they had stars with like what their kind of uh, tests were for that, their test subjects and stuff, which I think is pretty cool. So it sounds like Clarins really is still pretty plant-based. I had no idea. Like I genuinely did not know that about Clarins. Frankly, I just didn't know much at all. So I have the shade number 100.5 cream. I think it's, you'll see, it's okay. Again, I was ordering this online, so I knew this was a gamble, but I know I can lighten this, but for the sake of this video, I want to just show you the finish of it. You can apply it with your fingers. It's a little awkward to apply it that way, but you totally could. Um, I just prefer thicker, if I'm applying it with my fingers, like I totally do that with my BB cream, some foundations, but this is so thin, it's not as comfortable for me to apply with my fingers. You could do it with a brush. I've liked it with my sponge. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of that and just kind of show you. Hmm. In this lighting, it actually doesn't look too bad. The, the shade match that is. I just feel like with such a thin layer, it provides pretty nice, pretty coverage. You know what I mean? It's not a super thick layer, it's really thin, but it really is kind of immediately radiant. And I don't mean like shimmery or shiny or anything. I just mean like healthy, like there's this slight bounce of light off of it, but it's not like one of those crazy dewy foundations that are out there, you know, there are tons like that. So I'm getting another little drip drop from the Medicine Adrapa. I would say like one drop covers your cheek and then you could build on top of that. But that's what I've been doing for both of these. I feel like this is one of those foundations that's, if you're looking for high coverage, this will not ever be it for you. But if you're just wanting something lightweight and pretty and skin-like, I have enjoyed using this the few times I've used it. You know, I feel like so many foundations I try, even ones that I actually really like, if I look at them in my mirror up close, I can always see texture in certain spots, but this is one that it spreads so nicely that I don't see that texture. It's not as obvious, and that's very hard to find. So that's exciting. I was very, not surprised at how much I liked it, but like I said, I didn't love serum foundations before, but now that I've tried this, I'm like, maybe I should go back and like, does e.l.f. still make their serum foundation? I remember not liking that. But like I said, now that my tastes have changed, I wonder if I would. Now this is one of those foundations that if you touch it, before it's kind of let itself set, it's gonna wipe away. So like I was doing this and like my finger touched my nose and it wiped away a lot of it because it hadn't really set into the skin. I don't think you have to set this with a powder, but I guess what I mean is you kind of want to let it sit for a minute before you start doing something else because it does need that time to kind of become one with the skin. Now let's see, because I know some of you guys are gonna ask, can we build up the coverage? Because obviously I can still see my like freckles and stuff like that, but it's not super obvious. I think it looks really nice and even. This is enough coverage for what I like, but I figure why not take another drop or two and just see, because it said it was buildable. 
I just like the finish. It's like if you mixed, if you took a satin look and bumped it up like one half of a level, you'd get the finish of this foundation. So I definitely think you can build it up. That's really nice. So the product is their Instant Concealer. It says it's smoothing, long lasting, and it revives tired eyes. I have it in the shade 01, um, but their claims are that it's customized tinted correction for all types of dark circles. Um, the shades conceal shadows and signs of fatigue, restoring a natural skin tone to the under eye area. Long lasting fluid texture blends flawlessly and smooths eye contours. But this is where I'm like, what? It says medium to high coverage. Now, I do think the coverage is nice, but if this is a medium to high coverage product, why are they only making five shades? How in the world? But let me just show you, and then I'm gonna let you decide for yourself. So it's a squeezy tube, which kind of took me aback. How many ounces? Yeah, this is half of an ounce or 15 mils. And I'm just gonna get not a very big amount. Actually, that's more than I even intended. But I'm just gonna tap a little bit there, a little bit there, maybe a little bit higher up because that's the darkest part of my circle. And then I'm just gonna tap a little bit out here just to add a little brightness because why not? Um, it's a very, again, that same kind of a finish, like lifelike, skin-like, hard to find in a concealer-like. <laughs> um, you have to set it, it will set into your fine lines. But like I've said, it, it's no different than literally every other concealer I've ever used. So for me, that's not a breaking point at all. But I love how naturally, like looking at the difference between the one done and not, it definitely covers. You can still see a little bit, but again, it looks kind of like what they claim, like that natural kind of finish on your under eye, natural skin tone. But I just don't understand how this is supposed to work if they've got, you know, five shades. How is that supposed to work for everyone? They had a, you know, two light ones, a medium and two medium-ish. I don't even think they really go that dark. Um, so I, I wish they would improve the range here. But I don't know, you tell me, if you tried a shade that you thought, oh, no way this is gonna work and it actually does, maybe it's kind of more forgiving because it is so easy to blend. It's a little bit more breathable. I think even though it's got some coverage, it's a little more sheer once it's blended out than a lot of other concealers we've all been using, you know? I'm thinking of the most popular one, like Shape Tape. That one, I feel like shade-wise, if you've got a shade that's nowhere near, it's super obvious, but with this, I do feel like it kind of blends more into the skin. But do you see where it added a little bit of glow where I kind of tapped it? Isn't that amazing? So I feel like this is one of those ones you could totally tap in the center of your forehead. In fact, let's just try it. You know, any of those kind of high points of the face that you want a little bit brighter, maybe down your nose a bit, maybe on your chin, I don't know. Um, but it's just kind of naturally brightening and it kind of adds a little bit of glow, no shimmer or anything, but just, I guess I should say a little bit of light. So I'm gonna finish my makeup. I'm filming another portion for another video and then I'll pop back on because I have a lip product that I am very excited to show you guys from this brand. Okay, so I wanted to try on this Clarins lip product. It's their Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector. I have it in the shade number four, which there's like a name for their shades. They have like, I wanna say eight or nine shades, but number four is called Petal Shimmer, and it's 26 bucks, so I wanted to read you the claims and then show you what this looks like on my lips. I'm so excited. So it says, part makeup, part skincare, one lip-loving formula, all the color shine of a gloss with a treatment, or with treatment benefits your lips will feel good about. Acacia, micro pearls, and vegetable waxes nourish, protect, soften, and plump. Soothe the senses with a delicate vanilla scent. You can wear it alone or top off your lipstick with it. So. I was just intrigued reading that. I was like, I like the idea of it like actually being good for your lips, like color that's actually not completely ruining your lips. So you take the lid off and you squeeze it onto one of those kind of firm, kind of fuzzy things. I don't love the applicator. You know, it is what it is, um, but you squeeze it. So I like to squeeze a little bit onto my finger. It's pretty light at first so that it kind of blends into your skin tone, you know? This is one of those lip products that you need about a minute for it to sink in, because I do think it looks weird when you first apply it. So when I put it on the other day, I was like, I don't like it. But then after about a minute, I you know continued doing what I was doing, and then I looked in the mirror and I was like, yes. Yeah. So this is one that you need to give your lips a minute. So, tick tock. So that's pretty much it. It's just kind of glossy. It's nothing, 
you know, as far as I know, it's nothing special aside from the fact that there may or may not be ingredients in here that are better for your lips. But I do think it's one of those things that if you have any like chappedness going on, you might not like the way this looks on your lips. I do feel like even though it's a gloss, it's one of those that you kind of need it to, you need to have decently healthy lips on the days you use this. Cause otherwise I do think it kind of emphasizes that. And I honestly didn't realize it except for today. And my lips are a little dry on my bottom lip. And I feel like it's obvious. Whereas like the day I first tried it on, it wasn't. So I'm kind of feeling like my, my impressions changing a bit based on that. But I love the way it feels. It's really, I was confused because I don't think this is necessarily meant to be plumping, but I was reading reviews and one person was like, I had a really bad reaction to the plumping ingredient in it. I'm like, what? And the, their lips were literally like swollen, it said for like two weeks. And so I don't know what in the world, but none of the other reviews said that. So I don't know what happened. Maybe that person was just genuinely allergic to something in it, you know, regardless, I like the way it looks. Is this ever gonna be a holy grail lip product? I don't think so, but I could definitely see this being one of those like throw it in your purse kind of products. You feel a little more glam because it's a nice, you know, more expensive lip product. I know that sounds shallow, but sometimes it's just nice. You feel like you're pampering yourself. Um, but I don't think, I don't feel the need to go out and like buy a bunch of shades of this. Now, of course I will try all of these for longer and get back to you guys because I might grow to love this even more or I might grow to hate it. But I figured it would be fun to kind of rank the products into like the one that like, I am the most excited about the way it performs to the one I'm the least excited about. I think I am the most excited about this primer. I could see myself traveling with this because I liked the way it, um, I don't know that it necessarily got rid of sallow skin, but I do feel like it evened my skin tone, which is very new to me in a primer. So that was huge. And this is the thing I'm the most excited about. My number two was the foundation. I'm very excited about this. I have all of these new foundations to try, but I know how much I've enjoyed putting this on and that tomorrow when I'm getting ready, I'm gonna wanna put this on again. You know, it's a good feeling foundation. I don't think this is a long wearing foundation that's gonna last you, you know, 15 hours without breaking apart in some spots, it will. But for kind of that every day you want like a fresh face glow, you could really easily touch it up. I really enjoyed this. Third would be the concealer. I really like it. I did end up setting it with powder because I do think that it kind of needs that. I will link the powder I used to set it down below. It's more of a glowy powder, but I've been liking that on my under eye. I think it kind of, um, just kind of adds a little light to it, but I do enjoy this. And I feel like it's one of those things that it's easy breezy to use. It's easy to blend in. It's comfortable to blend in. I, I did really enjoy it. I guess this ranking system isn't working because I really am excited about a lot and really all three of those I'm excited about. The lip product in the skincare would kind of be four and five. I'm not really sure what order. I mean, the, the skincare, the day cream, I liked it. I would love to try more of it. I'll probably use this up, but $90 is expensive for a day cream. I love like Derma E makes a great day cream that I really like. I'm really enjoying one from e.l.f. right now as well. So I don't feel the need to spend $90 on this, but I will use that up. And then the lip product, I think I shared my thoughts on that pretty well. I really do like it. I think it's nice, but I don't think you have to go out and spend $26 on this particular lip gloss. So that's everything I wanted to share with you guys. If you have any recommendations for favorite products from Clarence, please let me know down below. I'm sure other people might be interested. Maybe there are some Clarence products you've tried that you didn't like. I'd also be interested to hear that. So please share your thoughts on the brand down below. And other than that, I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.